This is a Sports Catastrophe Special Presentation! Hey there, hello, hello there, it's Jeff Cutter, and I'm welcome you to another Poker Player Season 3 Review Show. We just finished the third game of both the Rounders and the Gamblers group. March 2nd and 3rd was a wild showdown. Both groups had some fantastic finishes and some ignoramity or whatever you want to call it. But yes, so just a heads up that there were three no-shows in the two houses. Two in the gamblers, one in the rounders. Which is kind of taking me off in a sense. But, you know, whatever happened. I mean, everyone played in week one. So anyway, it's all to play for in a sense. So here we go. We begin, as always, with the Rounders group because they played on the Wednesday, March the 2nd. There was a no-show that was Wings Rule, a.k.a. Dale, who was doing so well. Like, he put up a 10 and a 16, but work commitments probably slowed him down. So anyway, he didn't play. So that meant that it was down to nine players, and the first one out was the was a shocker as Jay Palm, who won and took second in the first two weeks, actually was the first one out. Maybe he was tanking. I don't know what he does. So anyway, his four points may not count. Anyway, next up with five points was someone who has fallen flat again as Jimmer, who took official last place in week two, fell failed to do well and got another five points for third place. So he's not really that great and all that, unfortunately, the first half of the campaign. And then next came the Clicker, who has had a decent match, but, you know, he's had a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. Going all in order, five, six, seven. All that. And then you had yourself Craftworks who did okay but at 15 and 6, but got a better 8-point effort. So Craftworks is now at 30 points, so nicely done for him. And then it came down to four, five players, and first of all, to falter was IM2D, who won week one but fell flat in week two and only got 8 points for 6th place. Well, he did better this time, 5th place, so he bumps himself up to 47 points and all that. Next up in fourth place with 12 points was No Show Sales, who actually showed up and showed his wild side, getting another fourth place finish. So good on him. And third place with one of the worst ways to lose. I don't know how he lost it, but they said that he got taken out. He had thought he had some good hands, but he got taken out, and that was Mr. Newf number one Newfoundland, Dwayne, who put up a second place in week two after a crappy week one, but took third place in week three and got bit really hard. He thought he had everything going for him, but he fumbled. And, you know, the cards just fucked him over. I'm sorry, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And then down to the final two, and second place went to Big Bitter, who finally showed how good he was after he was with the Gambler's House last year, and he finally shows up and plays some um, poker and gets 20 points. So he's now at 28 points. But the winner was Faden Poker, who was crappy in week one, taking eighth, taking ninth place. Only one person was below him. Didn't show up for week two, and then week three put up a 24-point effort. So he wins and puts himself into the top five. Now, a reminder, the top five places out of the ten people in each house moves on to the final, and then there will be a wild card tournament, which will determine, I believe, six spots to get in. We have a six and ten chance of getting in. So, the rounders marks after three weeks goes as follows. Jay Palm leads with 56 points. IM2D has 47 points. Number one, Newfoundland has 45 points, Baden Poker has 31, and Craftworks has 30. Those would be who qualified. However, 
No Show, McBitter, Wings, Clicker, and Jimmer are all in order. And Jimmer is last, but he's only seven points back of fifth place. So basically, it's a wide it's wide open after the top three. We have three very talented gol um, golfers. I mean, poker players. You know what I mean, right? So anyway, now the the real, the thing is, the, we play three weeks, and remember the la your two worst scores don't count. So basically, whatever your top result is after three weeks, that's what carries you forward. So carrying forward, J Palm has twenty four point, IM2D has twenty four. Oh, sorry, yeah, twenty four. Newfoundland has 20, Baden Poker 24, Craftwork 16, No Show 12, McBitter 20, Wingsville 16, Clicker 10, and Jimmer 12. But then you gotta also remember that knockouts count as a point and cannot be taken away from you despite you playing in a bad game. And the number of knockouts J Palm leads with 8, IM2D has 5, Newfoundland, Baden, and McBitter have 3, 2 from No Show, 1 from Wingsville, Clicker, and Jimmer. And Craftworks is in fifth place without a knockout. Two or three weeks. Is this unusual? Well, I don't know. You'll have to find out. Okay, so on March the 3rd, it was time for the gamblers to do something about it. And, you know, there were a couple of no-shows. Hockey Dad and John Hawkins both decided to take off and do other things. Both had other commitments to go to. And of course, you know, I'm shaking my fist at my brother, but, you know, my nephew was playing hockey. I thought he couldn't play hockey on Thursdays. Regardless, so it's down to eight players. The first one eliminated was Sun Summer, who has fallen flat. Summer moved from one of the weirdest poker houses to one of the, the great poker houses, the Gamblers, who brought all but one person to the final last year. In their play, ten out of eleven, and I believe four out of five people who won money got were from the gamblers. Anyway, some summer faltered again with another five with another dismal effect, getting five points. But the funny thing is, after summer left was eliminated, something crazy happened. It took almost eighty minutes before the second person was eliminated. It was up and down, left, right, center. You know. Gauche Dois Centre de Rien, if you will. And finally, somebody went out. And the second person out was I Hate Humans, who faltered with six points. So, faltered with a seven place finish. Had ten in week one, five in week two, but now a six point effort in week three. Not too good. And following I Hate Humans. Yeah, of course, it's me. The long silence says, I am hesitant to talk about my shitty performance. I had a couple of good hands that I folded. I got jackknifed a couple of times, including a straight that Kappa, aka Master of Keys 35, did. So, obviously, I am got a little pissed off at myself. After a pair of Fourth place finishes, I faltered and took six. Just like I normally did. I took four sixth place finishes in the first um, season and all that. Six used is my unlucky number, if you will. After that came DZS, DZS, who made his debut and took second place in Gamblers, but then faltered badly in week two, but week three did a little better, took fifth place, no big deal, ten points. And then came down to the final four, and first to go was K AMFS Krista, who put who's done better. She had a five point effort in week one, eight points in week tw two, and now twelve points in week three. So maybe she'll get up to third top three this week. Hopefully not, but you know, that's just me saying. And then in third place was Master Keys, who actually Won the first two weeks and almost did the trifecta, but he faltered taking third place. Down, It was down to Briber and Rhythms. The defending season two champion, that being Rhythms, and Briber, who actually made a great rally in the wildcard game to get to the final table and did pretty well. And unfortunately for Rhythms, he was the one who had to suck it up. Rhythms has had three straight top three finishes. A third, a third, and a second. 
which has been amazing for him. And Bridebird has done much better. He had eight points or six plays in week one, was runner up in week two, and then one week three. Well, at least there's nowhere to go up but down. Oh, but down, because obviously you can't do better than 24 points. So, Briber actually had a couple of chances of being KO'd by people. Not me. I didn't knock him out. I couldn't knock him out. But anyway, Briber was a fucking cockroach, if you will. But anyway, yeah, he had a chip in a chair at one point, and plop, nobody could knock him out. Nobody. Not Master Keys. Not Rhythms. Not DCS. Not me. Okay. <laughs> not Krista. Man, we all sucked. We let this cockroach ruin us. And that's just not right. Sorry. Just my piss offiness, if you will. So anyway, yeah, Brightbird did well. So after week three, the, the scores are as follows. Master Key says 71 for first. Brightbird second with 61. Rhythm's 58. DZS 38. I'm in fifth. I'm on the bubble. Despite me not having a knockout. Kind of like what Craftworks was. Uh, Krista has 26. Ryan has 21. Summer has 15. Hockey Dad has 14. And Hawkins has 6. But Hawkins might be coming back for a few rounds. And that's what I'm afraid of. He's going to basically do what he freaking did last time. Not do so well in the first few games. And then come back and beat the shit out of everyone. But anyway, the knockout numbers. First place in knockouts was Briber with 9, then Master Keys with 7, Rhythms has 6, DCS has 4, Krista and Hockey Dad both have 1. It just goes to show you that it's not as wide open. I mean, when you look at the top 3 and then the other 7, there's a massive difference. So, yeah, I guess so. And, of course, that goes in, without saying, what about week four? Well, there is a bit of a hiccup, in a sense. Um, they're, due to a unforeseen incident in the Routers' house, they are not playing today the 16th, which would have been their week four date. They're playing March 23rd. So next Wednesday, the 23rd, they're playing. However, the Gamblers will play on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. They'll have the two-week hiatus until week five. Whereas, Rounders will have the two-week hiatus. We'll have a hiatus to the 23rd and all that. So, yeah, so... Oh, I was looking at the notes and saying that their final week will actually be on the 27th, not the 20th so of April. So, they're going to have... They're going to have... Second, and then they play the twenty third, and then they'll have two week cut, two weeks, and then they'll have a tw three week till the next game. So they go second after us. So I guess we have to realize what we have got to. We don't know what we got till it's gone. They paid fair price to put up a parking lot. I think we all know where the parking lot is in our heads, of course. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.